In this video, I want to show you three different ways that you can get Google Cloud Run up and running via services. There are jobs as well, which are containers that, you know, come up, do a particular job and then exit once they're completed. But we're going to focus on services, which are more longstanding containers. But honestly, the, the setup is just about the same. So first, I'm going to click on create service and we're going to go through the manual way. And then I'm going to show two different programmatic ways right after this. So you're going to specify either code or a container image. So let's say I wanted to use one of mine. This is just sitting up in Docker Hub. Or what I could do is I could go to select and I could pull one of the demo containers here. So it's entirely up to you. Next, I'm going to give it a name. So test deploy region this is, of course, going to be based on where you live any authentication that you need, CPU allocation, and a little bit of FinOps cost optimization here, and then ingress control in terms of how the application can be hit via the internet. Now, after that, we have the container configuration. So ports, name of the container right here, if you wanna edit it, any commands that the container needs to get up and running, resource optimization for both memory and CPU, any health checks and if you want to add a sidecar container you can along with some requests here maximum capacity per each instance revision and auto scaling so the number of instances you want to be running you could do the whole scale to zero thing here or the maximum number but you know of course if you want this thing to always be running you're going to want to change that to one of course next if we go to volumes you can add in any volumes if you have some persistent data that you need networking a couple of different options here and then security so encryption and binary authorization all right and then you can go ahead you can click create Oop, let's go to the issues here oh, i've got to choose one of these we're going to do allow unauthenticated and click create all right so this thing's going to come up it's going to be completed and then it'll start running all right and boom pretty quick so now if we want to, we can go to anything from the metrics to the logs, networking, security, and we could even hit actually, I don't even know if it's going to work. Let's see. Yep, it works. Perfect. Okay, so that's how we can do it from a UI. Let's go ahead and see how we can do it from a code perspective. Now, the first option is Cloud Run's CLI, or rather gcloud's CLI. So if you use gcloud run deploy, and then you specify the name, which is, this is just a metadata name, so it could be whatever you want. And the image should just be able to run it with this one liner here. All right, let's choose where we want this to be. We'll do number 28 for North America. Allow unauthenticated invocations. Now we're gonna see it's starting to deploy that service. And then once it's done, we'll be able to just go back over to the web browser and see it. All right, and as we can see here, it's up and running. Go back to the web browser and we can see our service here ready to go. All right. Now, the next and final one we can take a look at is something from an infrastructure as code perspective, which in this case we can choose Terraform. So you're going to specify your provider, the Google Cloud Run service resource, and then you're going to spec it out just like you would a Kubernetes manifest. So you're going to specify the image, ports, and that's pretty much what's required. Also, the traffic is required as well for the percentage in terms of where you want the traffic to go if you have multiple containers. But in this one, I just also set up resources. So limits for the memory and requests for the CPU. So now if I run Terraform apply, auto approve, I already ran the plan. Creates it relatively quickly. And if we go to the browser here, do a refresh we can see the third one pop up. So those are three different methods. I always recommend starting out the manual way via the UI, just so you get an idea and understanding of how it works manually and then automate it. If you want to go the infrastructure as code route, that's a little bit better than using the CLI. Why? Because gcloud CLI and just like any other CLI is of course imperative. So if you want something a little bit more manageable from a scaling and production perspective, Take a look at doing it via Terraform or another infrastructure as code tool that you prefer.